Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, LearningDSLRVideo.com. I've had the same computer for the last two and a half years, and now that I'm starting to try to use DaVinci Resolve Lite uh, on Windows, as well as Premiere CS6, so I'm using Premiere 5, and I'm starting to run into some issues, so I'm looking to get a new computer. My friends and family think I'm some sort of computer genius because I can help them fix their computer, but I'm really not. I don't know how to build a system very well. So I'm looking to build my next system for using it for Resolve. All right, I'm a Windows user, and before you put a whole bunch of comments in saying you should just buy a Mac, um, you don't have to. I'm just gonna stay on the Windows platform. I'm very comfortable with it. It works just fine. Um, actually, my first computer was a Mac, but um, I'm gonna stick with the PC Windows version. So to give you some idea what I'm, where I'm coming from, my, my computer that I have now is a um, i7-930 at 2.8 gigahertz with 12 gig of RAM. And I've got an NVIDIA GT240, which has about 100 CUDA cores. I don't need some sort of monster computer, one that costs like $6,000. All I need is something that's maybe in the $2,000 range. Um, I don't need a 32-bit or 32-core CPU. Um, I don't have clients in my suite, if you will, um, looking over my shoulder. So a few drop frames here and there is not that big of an issue. So after doing a whole bunch of research and asking around, I came up with a parts list for a computer. So starting up for the CPU, it's the i7-3930K, which is a 3.2 gigahertz and has six cores. And it comes in around $570. From what I heard, it seems like a really good mix um, or bang for the buck. Uh, CPU for video editing and um, I don't know if I really need the K version I think that means unlocked again I'm not any sort of computer building genius but uh, the I've never un, you know I never overclocked something in my life so I don't know if I need that particular K but everybody seems to think that's a pretty good bang for the buck CPU next up is the Asus P9X79 Pro motherboard at $300 um, it's got eight DIMMs in it, so I can max it out to 64 gig of RAM if I wanted to, but I think I'm actually just going to start off at 32 gig. And the RAM I'm thinking of is just uh, like some Kingston, uh, four slots of eight gig are coming in around $250. Next up is the graphics card, which is the, the big question. Um, there's a lot of different graphics cards out there. Um, some are all over in terms of price range, and sometimes they from what I understand, looking at the benchmarks, they all look like they kind of perform similar. Um, I'm learning, leaning towards the GTX 680 um, at two gigs, um, at coming in at 470 bucks. And also there's a 670, which is $100 less than I'm considering. Um, and I also asked around and Juan Salvo, I believe his name is, he's a colorist. I asked him and he thought I should get this 680, but with the four gig and I guess the FTW version which comes in around 560 bucks. I might do that if I ha I'm below the $2,000 limit. Um, I might go ahead and get the better graphics card. Next up is the cooler. I don't think I'm gonna go with any sort of liquid cooler, so I'm just gonna go with the, a $30 cooler. Um, I'll put the link into it. It's some sort of Hyper 212 Evo with a long part number. <laughs> um, and from the reviews of it, it sounds very quiet. And I want this computer to be as quiet as my um, HP that I have now. Next up is, uh, I think it's Corsair 400R case, which is about hundred bucks. I've not checked to see if any of these graphic cards, because I haven't really picked my graphics card yet, will actually fit into the box. So I gotta make sure that that works. Um, next one is a Corsair 850 power supply, coming in around $140. Um, I'm not sure if I really need 100, I probably only need about 700 watts, but in case I might add some extra hard drives in the future, I'm gonna go ahead and beef it up. I already have a Kingston 480 gig SSD for my C drive. What I'm thinking of doing, and I don't know if this is gonna be correct, is buying a smaller SSD, like maybe 120, put my OS on that, use the, my Kingston 480, and use it as my scratch drive, and then use my three terabyte drive as my um, media storage area. Um, as for backup, to be honest, um, I have a really simple system that's working and working great for a very long period of time. It's never let me down. I've always been able to retrieve information very quickly. So I don't really need any sort of um, super redundant system. But um, if there's something out there, which I don't know much about RAIDs, to be honest, if there's some sort of RAID array or something <laughs> like that that actually helps um, speed input output, 
uh, in terms of how fast it goes in and out of the drives, um, definitely give me some advice there because I do not know what I'm doing with raids. So the question I have for you guys is should I put this together myself or should I just buy it pre-made and get it shipped to me? Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the just get it shipped to me kind of thing. I don't have to worry about putting it together. Um, I, you know, it might be kind of a fun exercise. I don't mind spending a little extra money to get the parts that I need. So if I did do it by myself, put it, buy the parts, put it all together, which I could take my time and do it because I could still be using my existing machine. But if I ran into a problem, um, maybe I could make a, a video of it and you guys could help me along the way if you want that direction. Because I would make an entire video of me putting it together which should take a few hours, but I could probably condense the video down to maybe 15 or 20 minutes of putting it all in. So let me know what you think. I'll talk to you later. Bye.